Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Alexandria Film Festival, featuring over 40 engaging films. While we're virtual this year, we're so glad you've tuned in to learn more about the films in this exciting program. My name is Jillian Ray, and I'm pleased to serve as moderator for this Q&A with filmmaker Lawrence Whitener and lead actor Roger Kabler um, about the film Saving Robin Williams. And from my uh, conversation earlier with Lawrence, I understand this is a film that's new to the film festival circuit, uh, just started in February 2020, and you've already received numerous awards. I think you said over 40. So first of all, congratulations to both of you on being accepted to the Alexandria Film Festival. We are thrilled that the audiences in the Washington Metro area are going to be able to see your film. So congrats, yay. <laughs> all right, so first I'll get to the question, which I think probably is on everyone's mind after watching this film is how you were inspired to make this story because Robin Williams was such an iconic figure in so many people's lives, including my own with Mark and Mindy and um, really beloved figure. So um, it's, uh, it's really interesting to see this concept play out on the screen. So if you could um, tell us what inspired you. Well, I, I, you know, I am a, a, a fairly prolific uh, writer and I had the premise, what if you could go back into time, but only once, who would you save and why? That, that was the log line. And I saw the Time Life commercial and I suddenly realized as I was just watching this man that regardless of where I was in life, he would always make me smile, is that I didn't, I, myself, all three of us, me, myself and I, we did not have closure on mm -hmm. why he did what he did. And I felt that if I didn't have closure, then probably a lot of other people didn't either. So I began to do research and just reading everything and watching. And Roger and I talked about this on set. When you've watched as many of Robin's uh, television interviews, talk shows, he had a routine. You didn't see it if you only saw one or two. But if you've watched all of them, as both Roger and I have, you know, the man was there on a mission. And that was to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. And and I didn't. You know, so I just kept going and going and researching. And then the hook was that rather than just do a documentary where you interviewed, which is his wife, uh, Susan, has her uh, Robin's Wish on Amazon, which is just, you know, interviews. Yeah. And it was sad. I said, what if I could make all of the dialogue actually Robin Williams' mm -hmm. own work? So then it became this massive jigsaw puzzle of me literally having all around me all of these great quotes. And could I put them in some sort of order to tell the story? So literally every line that Roger says in our film are Robin Williams' own quotes. Yeah, that was really astounding to me when I read that um, because it sounded so much like Robin Williams. Yeah. I thought, wow, well, you nailed it as the writer. You you really kept, but it really is Robin well, Williams. It's Roger, <laughs> it's Roger saying Robin. Yeah, 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 exactly. And Roger, for you to come at this role, um, which you're amazing in, not only your you know attributes and, and your gestures and facial expressions, your voice, your hair, everything just really <laughs> reminds everybody, anyone who watches yeah, this film. Think, yeah, come on now. <laughs> so um, yeah, what did you what did you think when you were approached about the role and and uh, and taking on such a amazing um, mission really? Well, I was very honored to to be asked. Um, and I also thought it was a really intriguing and almost dangerous idea. Um, because of the subject matter, to, to explore somebody's life, the in the in the period, the part of his life, I don't want to give away too much, but the part of Robin's life that it takes place in is extraordinarily rich and complicated. And there's tremendous opportunity to be and, and have facets of Robin that I'm very familiar with. I'd say Lawrence and I are probably some of the foremost amateur authorities on the life and words of Robin. I, I do a Robin tribute, which is 45 minutes to an hour, of just Robin. Stuff that I wrote mixed with stuff that he wrote in his style that I wrote. 
and his style. And so I know his work backwards and forwards and I know his life. I know um, um, intimate stuff that I just like to try to be an authority on it, like Lawrence, to be able to reflect some of that knowledge in, in that script, which he put together beautifully. You did, man. Yeah. And then the challenge of working with Lawrence in, in, in this very specific point at Robin's life, without it being totally, you know, shocking, mm -hmm. because Robin, I could still play Robin, I could still find those beats and that intricacy and subtlety and also the energy, the fierce desire to communicate was there too. And that was all in the script. So I found it uh, not only just an honor, but an extraordinary challenge and a beautiful experience ultimately. To, to, I discovered a lot about myself as an actor. Wow. To get out of the way and just let Robin work was really what it was about. Well, speaking of working, so we're, we're all working in this virtual COVID world and it's difficult. I know it's made a lot of um, lives difficult just for regular workers and, and day workers and then filmmakers and actors. So how did you all um, work together to prepare for this film? Were you doing it virtually? You said well, you were on set, but like, how, how did that work? Uh, we, we were lucky. We, we had it put together and we shot it last November. Oh, you did, uh, okay. Uh, 11 months ago. So, on the cut. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, so, you know, I mean, I had been putting it together for six months, but we shot it in November and it was my third film in 12 months that I'd shot. Wow. So I was on a roll and, <laughs> and we were lucky. We got it, we got it done and, and you know, I, I put it through four different editors to get the wow. version that you see now. No, it didn't, it didn't go through one and I actually sent it to England because uh, we had a little sound glitch in it and and it had to be perfect because robin deserved it so uh a lot of time a lot of money was spent to get the film that you see now and we cut 10 minutes out oh, because okay. it's only well it's you know without giving it it's only supposed to be in a 15 minute time frame and we had a 38 minute film and so uh hard decisions had to be made in the editing bay as so that, and now when you watch it, it does feel like it's a 15 minute film. Mm -hmm. I mean, it moves so fast. Fast, right. Uh, but you know, you never, you never get why the professor is dressed like a biker. Right. You, <laughs> yeah. you, you as the professor. Well, yeah. I, I, know I, do that. You know, I wrote it, uh, this is my seventh year as a film judge for the New York Film Festival. And whenever I see a film that I'm judging and it comes up written, directed, uh, starring, edited by music. I'm like, oh my God, you know, you have to have a lot of different people to come together to make a great film. So I didn't want to star in it. Um, I had the wonderful director, David Langlitz out of New York, who had, had signed up and agreed to it. And then I did a shooting uh, shot list and a shooting script and sent it up to him. And he called me up and he said, Larry, I can't direct it any better than how you've written it for the directions, he, he goes, what would you want me to do if I was actually on set? And I said, uh, watch the monitor <laughs> because, you know, we have to get it done. It, it was a three day shoot. And uh, he said, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna support you with the money. And he's the reason why we got Roger. I, I didn't know about Roger. There's only three Robin Williams impersonator. One is too young. One doesn't look anything like him. And for some reason, all the research, I couldn't find Roger. It was David Langlitz who found Roger and, and put us in touch. So without David, you and I wouldn't even be talking right now. Wow. So, uh, but I didn't want to play it. And, Rod, uh, and David being David and David, the whole reason, everybody that came together on the film was because of their love for Robin Williams. Right. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the, and, and it, there was so much love and, uh, positiveness on the set. It was, you know, when when we wrapped, people cried. Because well, they cried during the shoot too. I, I seem to recall there were some moments that were striking people as very, very real and very. Um, it's a very touching story, 
and it's also very funny, but uh, that I remember several people just weeping. Yes. Mm -hmm. you did something right. And, and that, that was a me, good sign. Yeah. Yeah. So for me to be the director and the actor, and I can't, and when Roger flips a switch, he is Robin Williams. Yeah, that, and, that really came across that and way. I had to, that I had to use every bit of, of actor training to detach, mm. be able to stay in character and not just sit there in awe. Of well, one of, the one, one of the wonderful things, if I can interject, is that you, Lawrence, you worked me really hard in this series of, um, you know, tele uh, video conferences we had in rehearsal. And, and I remember thinking, oh my God, this isn't gonna be easy. This guy works you. <laughs> he demands a performance and he demands, not, not in a way that's demanding, but, but challenges me. And you did this beautifully and very diplomatically to do better and better and better. And we started out in one place and we ended up with this incredible flow between us because we had developed a relationship in a, in a, in a flow via the internet. So when, by the time I finally met him in person, we were just ready. We had three days, we were ready. Wow, wow. So if, um, so a, kind of a, a, another question that comes up is what did you all learn during this process? Because I imagine it's, have you made a film at all remotely like this? I mean, you said, Roger, almost dangerous. I mean, it's, it's so unique. Um, well, I'm what, working on a film now called uh, uh, Being Robin, which oh. is nothing to do with this film. But it's about a guy who thinks he might be possessed by Robin Williams. Oh, he's an artist. It's very much based on my own story, but I'm an, also an impressionist. But this guy's just an artist, and he he's also an empath. So Robin is trick or treating for a human connection after he dies, and he comes back to Earth because he's not done, and he just happens upon this artist in New England, and I hear him in my dreams and then in waking life, and uh, he gets me to do a stage show. He wants to go back to work. He, hasn't, he wasn't done and he didn't finish well and he wanted to finish well. So through me in this movie, uh, whether I'm crazy and just a guy who imagines all this or whether it's really Robin's spirit is the mystery of the film. Mm -hmm. But I'm editing it now and it's been three years in the making. It's a, wow. it's a very big undertaking and it's one of those things where director, producer, star, uh, editor and fundraiser. So it's, Ton of work. I'm getting help now. I too am going to London for editing. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, this was a great companion to that. And I think the two films will go hand in hand beautifully when I'm done. Great, great. And uh, Lawrence, what are you working on next? I mean, you're always working. If anybody looks at your um, bio, it's chock full of um, screenplays and, and films. And so what, what's next on your calendar? Well, I, I had a film. They've cast and everything, and oh. uh, and we were we were all set to shoot um, <laughs> this week, this weekend, oh. and uh, that was in February, and oh. then of course March, the world changed. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so um, you know it's already uh, all my films are SAG films, and it's it's quite a lot of paperwork to get it approved, but it was approved, and um, I had to make the decision because it was. There's a saying, you know, you never want to pretend behind the camera. And um, yes, it is. It is possible to film under these these amazing uh, safety regulations that SAG has put out, where you have to be tested every seventy two hours, and, and yeah, everybody has to wear masks. And makeup artists, they have to pretty much be in a hazmat suit. Wow. Um, but I, on my, yeah, I just made the decision to shut it down until next year when, because we need to be, I, I can't imagine making a film where you can't hug mm -hmm. because hugs are really necessary on a set because you become a family. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, waving at people, not being able to shake hands, not being able to hug them, especially after you rap, I, I, I just shut it down. So what I'm actually doing, I'm ready. I just got the approval uh, yesterday from SAG Baltimore is for my COVID selfie about what it was like trying to actually make a film during <laughs> the pandemic. Clever, and, clever. Yeah, so uh, it, it's basically a selfie and I was uh, lucky enough to get uh, Brian Wilson uh, to play in it. But basically oh, the boy. title is Weapon of Choices, which is the name of the movie. Uh, four soldiers wake up in the dark in a cell shackled. They all know each other but for how long? Because mm -hmm. they're being tortured to forget. 
Oh gosh. And uh, so the, the, the selfie is called Weapons of Choices, The Making of. Kind of, sort of, not really. <laughs> wow. What the F is a pandemic, okay? <laughs> and, and, it, and I literally take it month by month with me talking to my, my Mac um, on, the, on myself, the real conversations I had, trying to get the information. Well, what is it? What are the approved labs? How do I get it? And it was so new wow. and it took months and months until finally we came to the point of last month, I, we can't do it. We, we just can't do it. So instead I'll be shooting this because SAG has their own film festival up in New York every March and September, free for members. And so I'll be putting this in. Yes, yeah, so the, the making of kind of sort of not really what the F is a pandemic. And uh, <laughs> that's great. definitely a catchy title. <laughs> well, I wanna thank you gentlemen for spending 10, 15 minutes with me uh, to talk about this amazing film, Saving Robin Williams both Lawrence and Roger, thank you for being our guests tonight. Um, and we encourage the audience to not miss any of the films in the uh, festival. So go ahead and go to Eventive and get your, um, purchase your tickets for online viewing um, and use the hashtag, hashtag Alex Film Fest when you post about these amazing films on your own social media. Uh, so once again, thank you gentlemen, have a great yeah. evening and Thank you for being uh, supporters of the arts in Alexandria, Virginia. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Lawrence. Well, are we done? Are we, did we cut? We're cut. Okay, well, we can visit for a few minutes then. So, uh, yeah, Raj, I just, you know, if there's another human being in this world that I'm surpa 